looking for Bluetooth speakers that are a little different than average, but ones that still have great sound quality. I'm Erin for Best Buy Canada's blog, and I recently had a chance to try out three new speakers from Marshall. There's the Tufton, the Kilburn 2, and the Stockwell 2. I got a chance to play around with each of these in my home for a few weeks to see what they sound like, how easy they are to use, and what sets them apart from each other. I'll walk you through all that, but first up, if you end up liking this video and finding it helpful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing since it does help us keep making more videos that we hope everyone out there can watch, enjoy, and learn from. Marshall Tufton is the largest and most powerful speaker in this range, followed by the Kilburn 2 and then the Stockwell 2, that's the smallest and most compact. In the spirit of go big or go home, I unboxed the Tufton first to get things started. I review a lot of speakers and most of the time I power them up and play them for a while and get to know them, then make a pronouncement on like or dislike. The second I turned on the Marshall Tufton, it was like Dave Grohl kicked in my door with the rest of the Foo Fighters and unleashed a live show in my living room. You know, I actually stopped and turned to look at it with my mouth open. The sound is astonishing. It's true, it's detailed, clear and vibrant. It's just so easy to listen to. Plus the impressive sound quality, the throbbing bass and the overall power of this speaker gave the room a truly room filling sound. I also immediately fell in love with the retro amp style design. As a mid-century modern fan, I really appreciate the retro look, but the look that still has those modern technological conveniences built right in. Now, since we're on the subject of sound quality, let's get right to how the others sound as well. <laughs> The middle child of the Marshall family, the Kilburn 2, has many of the same features as the Tufton, as we'll see. I did notice with this one that I needed to crank the volume level to about 6 just to be able to hear it. I'd first connected to the Tufton, the larger one there, and it was plenty loud on level 3 or level 4. And when I switched it over seconds later without changing anything else, I could not hear a peep from the Kilburn 2. Now, volume oddities aside, the sound quality is really good, though it's not as knock you over as the Tufton. In hindsight, I probably should have started small and worked my way up from there. Now, the overall sound quality is strong. There's a really good level of bass, and both the bass and the treble are adjustable on this speaker, as they are with all of them. I did notice a titch more raspiness, and it's probably nothing you'd notice on your own without having the Tufton sitting right next to it. The Kilburn 2 isn't quite as rich and full sounding, but it does still sound very good. When it comes to the Stockwell 2, this little speaker also sounds phenomenal. It has a surprising amount of power for its size. It sounds great with a good bass level and clear overall sound with no raspiness, tinniness or reverberations. My biggest issue with this speaker was the same as the Kilburn 2. I had to crank up both the volume on my phone and on the speaker to get it to play loud enough. I was using this one at about 75 or 80 percent of the phone's volume and with the dial set on 10 on the speaker most of the time. I'm not sure what's going on with the volume, but with this speaker in particular, it is pretty limiting. I'd been using the speaker with the iPhone XS Max previously, so curious I grabbed my Google Pixel 3. Same issue, I needed the speaker cranked in order to hear it at a decent level. Each of these speakers is largely the same design. Black case protected by corner tabs for durability, and they're all somewhat water resistant. They all have that same leather guitar style carrying strap and all the same buttons and knobs on top. There's three dials on top here. It's volume, bass, and treble. There's also a small Bluetooth button and a battery level indicator. The Tufton weighs in at about 10 pounds and stands nearly 14 inches high. It's big, heavy, and you will probably find it most at home on the floor. The Kilburn 2 is what I'd call a medium-sized speaker. Weighing in at about 5 pounds, it's 10 inches at its widest. The Stockwell 2 is the smallest of the Marshall speakers I tried out. Unlike the Kilburn or the Tufton, this speaker uses USB-C charging to power up. The others use a dedicated AC cord. This speaker is about 3 pounds and much smaller, 7 inches at its widest point. Somewhat surprisingly, each of the speakers have pretty much the same battery life. Marshall says the speakers will give you around 20 hours of portable playtime. Of course, if you keep them connected to power, whether you're using the AC power of the Kilburn 2 or the Tufton, 
or the USB-C power off the Stockwell 2, you'll have endless access to music, podcasts, and whatever audio you're listening to. The Tufton and the Kilburn 2 are both IPX2 water resistant. That basically means it's okay against drops of water, but you wouldn't want to actually get it wet. The Stockwell 2, that's the small one meanwhile, is IPX4 water resistant, and that means it can handle something more like actual splashing, but even so, you definitely want to keep it out of direct water as well. I tried the Marshall speakers out in my backyard to see how well they could fill outdoor space, and again, I was impressed. Even the small Stockwell 2 was impressive outside. Obviously, it had a lot less power and would be best suited to a small gathering sitting nearby, but I could hear the Kilburn 2 easily across the yard. The Bluetooth range on these speakers is supposed to be substantial. All of the speakers have a declared range of about 30 feet, so I tried walking all over my house, and I didn't find the speakers disconnected from the phone or dropped out. Each of the speakers in this Marshall lineup will also allow you to connect to more than one Bluetooth device, a feature Marshall calls multi-host, and that means you can connect it to your phone and your tablet, or to another phone, or let your guests connect to it as well so they can play DJ at your party. I found I was able to connect several devices to the Tufton speaker, for example, but in practice I could only ever play from one device at a time. When I tried to use another device, nothing would happen. Either the Tufton would disappear from the Bluetooth list, or I would just get a connection unsuccessful pop-up when I tried to connect. I tried disconnecting from the first device I was using, that was my iPhone, and then trying to connect from the second device, my tablet, but no dice. I ended up having to repair just to get a connection. So if you find that kind of frustrating, as I did, it didn't really work for me as it should. You can also connect an auxiliary source to the 3.5 millimeter stereo jack if you want to go that route. Getting connected to any of these speakers is pretty easy. If the device is plugged in, it will seem like you can just push the Bluetooth button and you should be able to connect. What's not obvious though is you need to turn the volume on. That actually turns the power to the device on and lets you connect using the Bluetooth button. Just push and hold that button until you get a small sound from the speaker, then go to the settings menu on your phone or device and look for the speaker and tap to connect. Are you wondering if you can use two or more of these speakers to play music in several rooms or to create a stereo pair? The answer is no. They do not connect to each other, which is kind of disappointing, and particularly at the price point that they are selling for. Marshall tells me that stereo pairing is possible with some of their other speakers, like the Acton, the Stanmore, and the Woburn, but not with this portable speaker lineup in particular. One big thing I also think this lineup is missing is voice control. You cannot connect these devices to Alexa, Google, or Siri to get that voice control, which is kind of a shame. Voice control is a huge feature that many new speakers are adding, and it's disappointing not to see it in this very expensive lineup. When it comes to the pros of these speakers, the sound quality is great, they're easy to use, and they look great. Those are all high points on my list. The downsides? For the price, these speakers are missing some features like voice control and the ability to connect to more than one speaker to create a stereo pair or multi-room audio. I also found the multi-host function didn't work for me, and that low volume level when connected to the Stockwell 2 and the Kilburn 2 felt quite limiting. Overall, if I were buying, for my money, my pick here would be the larger Tufton speaker for sure, mainly because of that poor volume level via the Bluetooth connection on both the Stockwell 2 and the Kilburn 2. Those are a distant second and third place pick for me. As for cost, if you're wondering how much for these guys, they are pricey. That might be another downside for some of you. The larger Tufton there is about $549 Canadian. The medium-sized Kilburn 2 sells for about $500 Canadian. And the small one here, the Stockwell 2, sells for about $349 Canadian. If you want to learn more about them, head over to blog.bestbuy.ca where we've got a full write-up posted and you can ask us any questions you have either there on the blog or as always here on the YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video and found it helpful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing since it does help us keep making more videos that we hope everyone out there can watch, enjoy, and learn from. I'm Erin. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram until the next time at ErinLYYC. You can also catch me on Facebook at facebook.com slash techgadgetscanada.